This is a plastic seat post collar that I designed in Tinkercad and it has the distinction of being the least sketchy thing we have here today. That's right, not only is this stuff all made of extruded plastic, but it was designed by yours truly. We're gonna be testing it all on a bike today. And we're gonna start small. We're gonna play it safe and then move on to more crucial stuff. But first I'm gonna set a few ground rules. So all the parts were made right here on my 3D printer. They're made of PETG filament. And although the parts are plastic, as you can see here, I have a piece of metal hardware in here. It's an M6 bolt. However, I did design these to actually resemble real alloy bike parts. I didn't like 3D print a big, strong one to try and make up for it. It's just a plastic version of what you'd use on the bike. So without further ado, let's play it safe and start with this seat post clamp first. So yeah, it fits perfectly. There's even this little lip to keep it from going too far. Starting to get tight. A couple more cranky poos. I'm actually surprised at how strong these threads are. I'm really cranking down on this. At least as hard as I would on an alloy seat post. Well, this doesn't bode well for our more crucial parts, but uh, let's chalk it up to an engineering mistake. I should have made that thicker. Let's move on to these lock-on grips. All right, not totally the same size as a real lock-on grip, but the concept is the same. It's basically just a grip body, and then at the end, there's a little clamp. Fits nice. Let's tighten it down, see if it stops rotating. <laughs> this is not going well. Well, I printed two of them. Let me be a little more careful I'm gonna try some assembly compound. I can't say I've ever used assembly compound for lock-on grips, but it's plastic on carbon. It makes sense that you would. Assembly compound is just kind of this goop with an abrasive in it, and so it sort of digs in so you don't have to tighten things down as much. I think we're almost there. Okay, I just gave it a little turn. Let's see if this is any harder to rotate. I almost can't rotate that with my hand. Ooh, <laughs> starting to crack. I can't turn that, I'm squeezing as hard as I can, and I could re-engineer this really easily to not crack there, just by being a little bit thicker. I think we got our first win here. Would have been nice to have two of them, one on each side, but I think it's rideable. But let's put some more 3D printed parts in this bike first. What do you suppose the next sketchiest thing is? Jockey wheel? Not the same size, but it should work. Jockey wheels are normally made of plastic. I think it's gonna work fine. I was even able to press a nice little bearing into this thing, and so I bet it's gonna be better than the original jockey wheel. It's alive. She works. I would say maybe it's a little rough. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't last like for half a ride. So two wins, one and a half wins. Let's up the sketch factor a little bit. I have this single speed gear that we're gonna replace that cassette with. Whoa, fits pretty nice. I almost got the width right. I just need one little spacer. Nice. All right, let's see if it works. Oh my God, it's so light, okay. Just a little bit of adjusting. I mean, I don't think anybody's surprised that it works here on the stand. I'm wondering if we can pedal it around. Let's give it a shot. 3D printed grip doesn't seem to do more than just a handlebar. I am pedaling. I'm not gonna push it too hard, but I mean, I had a little skip. I don't know what that skipping is, but I'm not gonna push my luck. I think we need to put some more 3D printed parts in this bike. All right. Okay. This looks insane. Oh, fits right in there. I bet this is gonna work better than a metal one. Mmm. I think as long as we go easy on it, 
she's gonna work. Easy does it with the pedaling. It's my rear brake, I'm gonna apply the rear brake. Oh yeah, that stopped the bike. I was going like uh, a fraction of a mile per hour. <laughs> you know what? That was a failure in my engineering. I made these triangles with these stress points and after I printed it out, I said, you know what, it's probably gonna break there. And it did, it didn't break at the bolt holes or anything. If I would have just made it one solid disc, it would work better than an alloy rotor, definitely. Yeah, it was my stupid design, not the, not the plastic. <sighs> All right, I wanna test something else, but we gotta do it on my hardtail because it's a fox through axle. So as you can see, it's about like the axle I took out, except instead of an M6, it's an M8 at the end. We need a little bit of help. So uh, I, I think it's gonna work great. All right, I'm gonna play it safe and just kind of roll down the lawn. Ooh, I feel it like flexing for sure. Ooh. I thought I just heard it do a thing. I'm trying to just stay off of it. That's actually kind of scary. There's a lot of play. It fits in tight and everything, but it's just, it's like mushy plastic. I think uh, that satisfies my curiosity. Let's go hit the whale, no, let's not hit the whale tail. Uh, moving on. Let's try the stem. I know what you're thinking. I thought the same thing, but this has so much more material in it. I think it's actually gonna perform really well. I'm not being sarcastic. Let's install it and then be really, really careful. From here, it, it's, it feels like it's working. So the consequences of a stem breaking, or it's usually not the stem breaking, it's usually the bolts. I'm not worried about the bolts breaking, I'm worried about them ripping out of the plastic threads that they're screwed into. And so I'm gonna wear a full face helmet and just take a little easy cruise down the trail and uh, probably lay off the back brake. So the problem with this stem is that it feels perfect. You push down on it, you steer, you do whatever. It feels just like a normal stem. It's not mushy, it's not flexing. That is really scary because I don't know at what point this is not gonna feel like a normal stem. So let's just do a little cruise. Man, this stem feels okay. No way I'm pedaling up this. Oh. Oh yeah, I'm getting skipping. All right. Oh man, this stem scares me. Can we make it over this log? Okay. Just bump over this log nice and easy. Okay. Oh, oh man. I don't know if I care to really push this anymore, but Whoa. Okay. We made it. So it's fair to say that we learned something today, or maybe we just confirmed what we all already knew. 3D printed plastic is not a good choice in material for making durable bike parts. But I think with a lot of these, with a little re-engineering, they would work just fine. Like the lock-on grip, has been performing great since the beginning. The jockey wheel would probably be okay for a little bit. I think there's a big market for 3D printed rotors. But I think the thing that I'm the most surprised about is that the threads didn't get ripped out in any of these. The, it was actually the part that broke. And I think if we put enough plastic there, it, don't, don't make 3D printed bike parts. Ooh. 
Anyway, I hope somebody learned something today, and if not, I hope you at least found this entertaining. And some of you might notice my new shirt. It's Oscar and I going off the airbag jump behind a big full moon. He's in the basket here, just like E.T. I'm stoked on it. You can get this at CognitiveMTB.com. We have a brown version. We have a hoodie just in time for the holidays. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. And it did, it didn't break at the bolt holes or anything. I think if I just made it a solid disc, it would work better than a metal. <laughs>